perfect. And uh, well, welcome back to the Frankie Aces show on Pioneer Night for One with my special guest Lance Warlock. Uh, we're, we're now going on from John Carpenter to another very creative genius, I gotta say, guy who was the lead singer for the '80s band Boingo Boingo. Danny Elfman. I had no idea you would know that. <laughs> oh heck yeah! Remember, remember I said I was 23. <laughs> yes, that 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 guy, man, he's he's incredible. Oh heck. Let let me say two words about Danny Elfman. Okay. The Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he obviously, I believe it's another guy by the name of Alf, Alf Clausen who does The Simpsons as a series, but Danny wrote the theme song to The Simpsons, and it's about a minute and a half long of some of the most incredible kookiness and, and great composition that I think I've ever listened to. And I read this book. This is ironic that we're talking of him. Just this weekend, I read an article with him that said he was a guy that learned by trial and error. He never had compositional school. He didn't take orchestration. He wasn't this huge entire, you know, theory buff. I'm sure being a member of a of a very, you know, poignant band, he definitely knows how to play. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But as far as his movie scores, and literally he pays tribute to the fact that, you know, when he did the first Pee Wee Herman film, the Pee Wee Big Adventure, that that was very well received. But as soon as he hooked up and did Dan, um, Tim Burton's Batman, he blew up from there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, the, well, the one track that we're going to play before, uh, before we go to another break here is uh, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, that whole CD. Did you also know that uh, he wrote the theme song for Desperate Housewives? No, I did not know that. Yeah. Holy crap. It's one of those where, you know, sometimes I think I like that composer feel that you don't always know who it is, so that guy's able to just live his normal life, and some of these guys just hole up in their studios and write the most genius pieces of work but yet they're the normal guy. My cousin ran into Danny Elfman in the bank a couple of years ago. In fact, he called me right after, and he had just said, wow, what a really nice guy. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, Danny Elfman, uh, besides being a composer, when I, like we were mentioning earlier, uh, made music uh, Oingo Boingo. And what do you remember from Oingo Boingo? I remember a song, and um, it was called I Don't Know, and it was on the soundtrack to... Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Sean Penn. And I know that if somebody Google searched them or got onto Napster and, and, you know, searched them out for a listing, it would probably be from my standpoint, because even though I grew up in the 80s, I would have to hear the songs to be more recognized than just their song titles. Yeah. I was always bad with the title. I'd hear it and go, okay, I know that song. But they actually had a very, you know, long career, and hence he, I think he fell in the right place at the right time, and the man is incredible. He does wonderful percussion. There's a clip of him on the Planet of the Apes um, DVD in the special features that him talk, talking about a lot of the percussion parts you hear are him that have been laid in over and above the actual orchestra that's there. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mean, Danny Elfman, I mean, that guy, you know, has had what some would say a, a retrospective great career because, you know, not only with the uh, Oingo Boingo, but just being able to be responsible for some of the coolest movies out yeah. there. You know? Yeah. And, and you talk about growing up in the 80s, you know, even though I was born in the 80s, but even through the 80s and the 90s and even to now, know the fact that he recently you know, was responsible for the uh, Spider-Man theme as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, it, it is pretty amazing. Um, he's got a couple of CDs out there that uh, are actually, you know, that you can purchase that are called Music for the Darkened Theater, and there's a volume one and two. And when you just listen to that, you really find that you've heard more of him than you're aware of. Oh, heck yeah. Now, that being said, on a very quick note, speaking of 80s bands, there is one more poignant band that is a very famous composer that I would have to guess so many parents and kids have heard. Any idea who the composer for the Rugrats is? 
Oh, is it that Mark Mothersbrough? And do you know where he's from? I have no idea. Lead singer for Devo. Oh, really? So there, you know, it's kind of like, you got to be kidding me. When you read his list of kind of like composers that, uh, you know, that assemble a team with him, you'll find a lot of the band members from Devo as them. Wow. That's... Absolutely incredible what directions, I think. Music is so universal, whether you play guitar, piano, drums, you know, whether you're in a rock band, a punk band, or you're going to score the next, you know, hugest blockbuster, it's kind of all the same voice, just your interpretation. Yeah, that's for that's for sure. And uh, we're going to play the uh, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas theme song composed by Danny Elfman. And we'll be right back with more Frankie Ace's show late night with my special celeb guest, Lance Warlock. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Frankie Ace's show right here on Pioneer Night for One. I hope you enjoyed the theme song from The Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, courtesy of Danny Elfman. And I uh, talk about composers with me as a fellow composer, my celeb guest. And I call celeb guest because, you know, he comes from a big line of uh, his whole family is... Uh, very much, uh, very entertaining, and uh, just a bunch of people that love to do what they do. Lance Warlock, welcome, welcome, and I hope you're having a great time so far. I'm having a blast, and I was going to kick in and just say, yeah, my family is definitely entertaining. Um, <laughs> it's not notorious, or we we can be notorious for, you know, the late night, turn the lights off in the house, and my brother and dad and I get into a complete um, dart gun frenzy fighting. Oh heck yeah. We're very strange. Yeah, but you know what? It you know, it does it doesn't really matter because you know whether it's strange or Uki or, or Am's family or everybody loves Raymond, we're all part of it together. So, okay, I, I, you just hit my favorite show of all times. Uh, I've I bought all the seasons on DVD. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm still trying to get uh, season four. Then I'll have all the seasons. But uh, I, I, we were talking during the break about a movie that I recently saw. And like I said, well, I think Lance is looking it up right now on InternetMovieDatabase.com. Uh, 1408, you talk about a thriller with a great soundtrack, I tell you. Um, Gabriel Yard was the composer. Okay. Currently working on what I believe it's a, it's a TV show called A Room with a View. Uh, his credits are amazingly deep. Oh, wow. So... I can only imagine, because from what I've seen of the trailers, it, it it does look like a good one. Yeah, and uh, John Cusack, uh, the one that stars in it, and I tell you, you know, that guy's been in a lot of different films, but this one really, I think this one really takes the cake. I really do, because uh, for it being a new movie, not even on DVD yet, it's still in theaters, just one of the new releases for the summer movies, as well as Transformers and the new Harry Potter and everything else. But that movie, I thought, you know, for for Stephen King, I mean, I thought I thought Stephen King did it with the movie It, but I tell you, this one really does it. You know, that's yeah, I, I bet you it does. And, and when you research, I think Cusack, he's done so many different things that the guy's just capable of pulling off, you know, all sorts of different characters. Oh yeah, and the next person that we're going to talk about is John Ottman. One of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and you might as well tell why, because I know during the interview you you said why, but people probably 